All right, folks, uh, we're going to solve a problem that we had last time, and that problem is that you can't press more than one key at the same time and have the program recognize it and do something. And the way that we're going to get around that is uh, we're going to have to completely get around the fact that processing uh, can only really pay attention to one key at any one moment. So we're going to have to remember what keys are down ourselves, or, well, with, with processing. We have to teach it how to remember what keys are down. And the way we're going to do that is kind of fancy. It's with this piece of code right here. Uh, we're going to create an array of, of, the, of booleans, basically, that keep track of whether up is pressed or not. And if it's pressed, we're going to change this to true. And if it's not pressed, we're going to change this to false. And then we're going to have the draw function right here, draw. We're going to have it look at each part of the key array here. Key array 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 5 and keep track of whether those are down or not and if they are then we're going to do something so we're going to give it so that it can do multiple things at the same time um, right here the, this is the the big idea here we're going to make the draw function pay attention to multiple uh, parts of our array rather than just uh, the key itself um, so again the the construct here for an array is square brackets make it an array and this tells it what type the array will be so here's an, a matrix of booleans we're going to call it key array, so that's the word we're going to use. You can see down here in the code, I'm using that. Uh, we have to construct it, so it's a new Boolean array. I know this looks redundant, but this is just the way that processing makes variables. And we have to tell it how many things. Well, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even though it counts from zero, so it's actually zero to five, but zero to five is still six things. Uh, and then we're going to keep track of, you know, where it is. So x, y, and r. Uh, and this is that alternate way to declare variables here, if they're all going to be floats. Uh, you can see here our basic setup. Uh, I put the ball, you know, somewhere on the screen. Um, and then we're actually going to skip the draw function and go down to the key pressed function. Uh, this is a really big change from the last video. You can see here that instead of just uh, doing something, like changing the x or y value in here, if the key code is up, then I'm actually going to change a part of the array to true. So in other words, uh, the zeroth entry in our array represents the up key. And if it's pressed, I want it to be true. Same thing with down, right, and left. And then W and S are going to grow the circle. So that's the variable R that we were working, at, working with above there. Uh, so if I press down W, we're going to change the fourth entry to true. And if I change you know, S, I'm going to change the fifth entry to be true. This is totally made up. I could have done them in any order I want. I'm just keeping track of them. It goes up, down, right, left, W, S. Okay, so these then become true, uh, and they stay true until I lift up the key. So we can see here I'm using a separate function. This is the first time you've probably seen it called key released. And if I press, if I let go of up, then this function is run, and this function says, "Hey, when a key gets let up, let's fire an event and figure out which key that was." Well, if it's up, then we're going to change it back to false. So now we have a way of keeping track of when the key goes up and when the key goes down. And I just repeated that same code for all of these keys. Okay, so I can change these things back from true and false. So my array can look really, really, really goofy at this point. So if I just draw an example here, my array can look like true, false, true, true, false, true. And this would mean I have one, two, three, four keys pressed at the same time. Um, and because we're keeping track of that in the draw function up here, we're saying if key array 0, which means if it's true, then go ahead and move it backwards 5. If key array 1, which is down, then move it down 5. So all of these could potentially fire and then redraw our ellipse, this ellipse, in a new place. Uh, so that's the idea behind pressing uh, two keys at once, and you end up with some pretty cool behavior uh, as such. You can move it around and grow your ellipse all you want. You can see here I'm pressing two keys at the same time. Uh, now I'm pressing uh, left and down, it moves on a diagonal, I can go back over that. I can even press shrink and grow and move on a diagonal at the same time. Uh, I can press all the keys at the same time, which makes the thing, you know, barf here. It doesn't do anything. I'm pressing all the up, down, left, right keys right now. Um, so that's, that's where we do it. Uh, that's how you do more, more than one key at the same time.